Rose. We're uh, kicking it old school over here at the Krasny Residence. My name is Yuri. I'm Alex. We got AVDP episode eight on the docket. Ready to rock and roll. What's first up on the, on the list here? I'll tell you what's first up on the list. It's these football players. These football players who keep abusing their kids and wives. They keep on beating down their wives and their children. It's pretty crazy. It is crazy. And you know, it's not like only football players abuse. It's just, I get so mad when these are the, here's my view on it. Okay. We're specifically in, in okay, so the Ray Rice, let's just go over the incidents. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go over all the incidents. Really here's quick. what first got me thinking is a Ray Rice incident. Uh, who's Ray Rice? I don't know who he is. Ray Rice is a running back for the, or was for the Baltimore Ravens. So an NFL player. These are all NFL players we're referencing. Here. Okay. So he punches his wife in the face in an elevator. She smashes her head on the fucking railing. She's knocked unconscious on the fucking elevator. Can't believe she didn't die, honestly. Like, if you watch the video, it's Oh, unreal. it's rough. Yeah. So he's like a fucking football player. You're not, If you're a football player, you don't hit a woman in the face with a fucking fist. You've, you've watched the video, obviously, right? I saw the video. The creepiest part of the video to me... I mean, obviously, it's disgusting and, like, it's horrible to watch that happen. But the creepiest, weirdest part is just how chill he was about it. Uh-huh. Like, he hits her... She knocks unconscious, and then he's just, he kind of stands there, the elevator door opens, he's like, oh, here we go again, starts kind of pulling her out, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, like, if you watch it, he looks very casual. It's weird, and it's really Business uncomfortable. Business as usual. That's what knock it looks like. Knock the bitch out again. That's what it looks like. And it it's really, really does. It's really scary. And then, uh, so that incident got me thinking, going, well, this motherfucker. So what happened there is, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't follow football because I fucking hate it. Sure, I follow this pretty, pretty uh, He gets suspended for, like, a little bit. He, well, yeah, he originally only got suspended for two games. Yeah. Which is half the punishment for a somebody who, like, smokes weed or, you know, takes some kind of, like, amphetamine. Uh-huh. Like, so the, it's a, it was a joke. Like, yeah, so it's just you know. hilarious. So then yeah. the, the public outcry was so extreme. Then the NFL decided to look a second time at it. Yeah. They, they, they made this claim where they didn't actually see the video. Yeah, I know. That's... Well, that's weird. I saw the fucking video, and I couldn't give two shits about football. And I saw the video. Well, the video was released, you know, like, on the same day. Like, TMZ released the video. But the fact that, like, they they did an investigation. Like, that was part of their job in in this whole thing. Oh, and they they missed the video in the investigation? That's their claim. And then there were were obviously conflicting claims saying that, well, like, from the people in the hotel being like, nope, we we sent them the video. They should have seen it. We sent it out. Well, I mean, it was on fucking Google.com. Yeah. Oh, well, Ray Rice, did he punch his wife well, in the face? Well, this, yep, there th- it is. This is before I got released. I mean, like... Oh, before like, the there, there was a There was a pre-investigation. Oh. He got suspended f- for two games, but nobody had seen the video at this point. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then the video was released by TMZ. Yeah. And now everybody's like, what the fuck? How did you not see this video? If, oh. there, if there was a video, how did you not oh, see it? Oh, and now they're saying they didn't see it. Yeah. Okay, well, I still think that's total bullshit. Well, it is. And then, then like, people... There was a, uh audio recording. Be like, hey, like, we sent the videotape over to your... Uh, to your office, like make sure. Hope you guys got it. And they're like, somebody was like, yeah, I was like no problem. We got, it. we received it. So there's, like, it's it's a lie. It's a cover up. That's it's hilarious. that's hilarious. So once the video got leaked, basically, then they decided to, then the Ravens decided to cut him from the team. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then that happened. Then now recently, Adrian Peterson was over here, uh, beating his kid with a tree branch. Yeah, he uh, he a switch, which a is switch. If, if you don't know what a switch is, it's like a southern term where you basically make a kid. Go ri- like rip off a tree branch and then you spank them with it. So, that's called a switch. That whole process is called a switch. Yeah, that well, it is a switch, and then you give them a whooping with the switch. That's a southern thing. Yeah, interesting. He's from the south. This is where he where yeah. he gets it from. Now, this I love this part about it. Okay, so there's vi- there's pictures of what his kid looks like after he hit him with oh it. Oh my god! And he's got some pretty serious welts on him. From he's four. And this is this is the, the pictures are from like several days, if not a week. Later. Yeah, he's four years old. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I, I mean, I'm not like super anti like. You know, hitting your kid. That's whatever. I got I got spanked as a kid. I got the yeah, belt as a kid. I did too. And my yeah. dad told me stories about what his parents did. And it's just kind of the way to do it. it. It does work. Okay? It works. You don't want to get hit again so you don't do bad again. It's very basic. You know? But when you're four, that's a different shit. Like when you're eight, when you're ten. Well, well just the extent of the damage. Four years too. old. I mean, obviously there's some leeway. Like if you want to give your kid a yeah. spanking. But I, like, I don't know. Whether you agree with it or not as a, as a successful parenting technique, that's kind of your I like call. When he said, well, I'm just doing what happened to me when I was a kid. That doesn't like, make as it if right. That's a defense. Yeah. Like, well, okay, if they cut off your fucking pinky when you were a kid, is that something you do? Well, like, like blacks were segregated against, you know, back in the day. So if white people, are, you know, or whoever is racist now, like, oh, well, I did it when I was a kid. That's fine. Yeah, my parents did it. Why can't I, mean, I do that, it? It's, it's a. 
it's a ridiculous argument with anything. So yeah, so he so let's just let's call it what it is. He's abusing his child. Well, the sad part to me is that he's he's not a, a criminal in the sense of like he has a you know a malicious mind. Like he thought this was normal. He thought this is what you do to a kid. Yeah. And that's sad. Like that's fucked up. That he thought this was normal. This is I don't, the right thing. You know to do. what? I don't believe that. I I do because that's like I I believe that he had good intentions, but his intentions are so fucked. Like he punished this kid to that extent, and he thought it was because. That's what you do as a parent. There's there's definitely rage there. I uh, maybe. I guess I guess you're right. I don't know. There's I, I definitely know. rage. I mean, there's like systematic. Like I'm gonna hit you with this branch three yeah. times. Then there's beating your kid until his fucking legs are all fucking red and stripped up, like it's some fucking weird porn. That shit's not normal for a four year old. You it's know what sad. I mean? And I mean, there. He's again. He's not the only one. So like, you got more. You put more. I don't know who these fucking people are. You put and more. I I just threw a couple on here. For, put them on the, there. the first one is Reggie Bush, who I heard a report of saying, "Oh yeah, like you know I." I whooped my kid as well. Like I, um, my one year old. He in he, response to Adrian Peterson. Yeah, he was he was kind of showing support. He's like, I do something like my one. A one year old, and I I haven't actually confirmed this. When my buddy was telling me about this oh, one, okay. But I, I believe it. I mean, there's no there's no reports or anything filed out there. But he was saying like, yeah, a one year old. You're not even old enough to comprehend your actions. A at one year old. What are you trying to teach them with that? Nobody's gonna be like, oh yeah, I won't do that again when you're two because I got punished when I was one. But the two other ones are Greg Hardy and Jonathan Dwyer. And there's more than this. I, I only threw the two like recent offenders. Yeah. Greg Hardy was already indicted in a uh, or sorry, already charged and convicted by a judge for domestic abuse for like like punching his wife, dragging her by the hair, throwing her on a couch full of guns. This is like the testimony in court. Guns. And yeah. Hit her, dragged her by the hair, threw her on a couch full of guns. He had a couch full of guns for some reason. I mean, he was cleaning all his guns. Yep. And then he threatened to kill her. And like, and he got convicted. And he played the first game of the season still. Because there was like some technical loophole where he's like, there was another trial going to happen. Like, there's a trial by a judge and then a trial by a jury. But they only, they only suspended him after the outcry. Uh-huh. So the NFL is full of scumbags. The NFL well, is a piece of shit organization. And you know why the Vikings... So the Vikings ended up... Originally, they... Suspended AP for a game, Adrian Peterson. Not even suspended, but just kind of didn't let him play that game. Then they reinstated him. We're going to let him play again. But then sponsors pulled their advertising. Mm. And suddenly, nope, we, we got to get this right. We got we can't let him play. Now, yeah, the, then they fucking decided to be human beings. It's it's hard. I mean, you're not a football fan, but I you know I am. It's hard to be a football fan right now. It's hard to be a fan of the NFL. I, I'm not a football fan, and I'm glad I'm not. Fuck that sport. Yeah. Fuck every player. It's and, real easy for me. And Jonathan Dwyer... Is another guy, guy who just two nights ago, and this is after two they two nights ago, as in fucking Friday. Or yeah, what? like a couple days ago. Where, where, where are we? Today's Thursday. We're in Thursday. Like Tuesday. Okay. A couple nights ago, he like a report of him, like he he, he tried to basically rape his wife. Tried to like like he it, there were sexual advances that she was trying to get him off. She bit his lip to make him stop. Is the report? Okay. He punched her, uh, headbutted her, and broke her nose. Headbutt. Yeah. Then in front of their seventeen month old kid. He threatened to kill himself and threw a shoe at the kid, hit the kid in the stomach, and then the next day he punched her again. And the then next he, day. Yeah, and then he was arrested for this. Like, this shit is crazy. And it's all happened at the same time. How'd they catch that guy? Uh, I, I don't the know. file report? Probably, yeah. I haven't, I haven't done a ton of this. So, but. here's what I think about this whole thing. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm gonna... Um, first off, the NFL is the... The worst piece of shit organization I've heard, I've dealt with, I haven't dealt with them, but that I've heard of in a long time. I think all of them are pretty bad. They're all this bad, is, but this they're is, all bad. Yeah. And but I'm a sports fan. And I'm I hate all. Fan. I hate all. I mean, I pretty much hate professional sports. Yeah, I hate them. If you're if you're paid a million dollars a year to play a fucking game for a living, keep your fucking mouth shut and be a good human being at least. And it that's and the least you can fucking do. It's it's obviously not everybody that have felt in the in the in the not league. Everybody. There's good people, but the percentage compared like if you do a percentage study of people in most occupations in the general population, the general society, and then look at how many of them break the law versus how many NFL players break the law and get in trouble, the the ratio's way off. Look, like, of all the things there are in the world, there should definitely be a zero tolerance policy among like major league sports federations for for abuse. And they're they're changing it now. I mean, do you know the new laws? No. So the new laws are the first incident is a four-game suspension, which is still... I, I, I masturbate to four games. I know. I, I mean, it's, it's still whatever. But the second one is a lifetime ban. Mm-hmm. You can never play in the NFL again. It should be first one lifetime ban. Yeah. Game over. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Lifetime fucking ban. You don't... Oh, the Ravens canceled, so the fucking Cowboys can buy them? Yeah. Fuck that guy. Like, the, there should never be... 
It should never be okay to like to no. knock a woman out. Of he the can't just get a new contract for their three. Like, be a fucking celebrity and be a, a a role model for kids. Hey, all you gotta if you punch your fucking wife out, all you do is get two days suspension. Well, the weirdest thing is the whole culture. Like, like you you can go to a Ravens game and there are still women wearing Ray Rice jerseys. You know, there is a woman at the Vikings game who was holding a tree branch and a sign that was like, you know, we're gonna whoop them good today. Like that's sick. That's fucking sick. These people like. I don't know. It's you just, think that's funny? or I, I guess. Look, boys, have... boys and girls, it's too soon to joke around about the four-year-old that got abused. It's too soon to carry around a tree branch and fucking uh, talk about whooping the other team. Now, I, I have a little bit of a theory because a lot of people are like, How, what happened to the NFL? My theory is that the NFL has always been fucked. I mean, there's always been a shit like this probably going on. But with social media, with leaks, with all you know the, the amped news coverage to, yeah, a, to an extent it's never been to, uh, with pressure on the league, more scrutiny, more rules... I think now this stuff is just coming out and there's no hiding it. Yeah, man. I mean, a lot of, like, like the Greg Hardy, you didn't fucking hear about Greg Hardy. No, I don't know that That is. happened just this summer. And it's only getting big news now because of the Ray Rice thing. Like, 20 years ago in the fucking, you know, 90s and whatever, 80s, 70s, let's go back, people were doing all kinds of crazy shit. I'm sure there were fucking abuse and rape scandals, but they could cover it up easily. But, like, at least now things are getting out. I mean, that's a theory. I obviously don't have any proof for that right now, but... Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I yeah. mean, the more more coverage of everything, so. I mean, there there is a, a NFL player who like, wrote books. Like, I think Lawrence Taylor, who played for the Giants, wrote a book who's like, yeah, we used to fucking prostitutes, uh, crazy cocaine you can, parties. You can fuck prostitutes, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, but in the book there's a lot more shit, Yeah, too, it's but, when you start beating so, your fucking wife on fucking film. So, I don't know. I, I just think this is a... It's fucked right now. I mean, at least things are coming to attention, and hopefully there's going to be changes, but it's a sad fucking state of affairs. Hey, right get now. off football, boys. Stop fucking watching that shit. I mean... Don't support them. Fuck them. Don't pay him a fucking dime. Give him your fucking money. Well, I... Okay, uh, a dollar to the NFL is a dollar for fucking spouse abuse. Well, at the very least, I can't... That's get, the way I, I, I can't it. get rid of those, those cable channels. You can't? No. And also, like, not... Again, not everybody in the league is a scumbag. There you are a lot what? of scumbags. Scumbags by association, in my opinion. I mean... <sighs> scumbags by association. I mean, if somebody at your work does something horrible... I'll come out publicly and say, that's a motherfucker, I hate that guy. Yeah, fair enough. If well, I don't I, do that, I'm a piece of shit. Yeah, too. but every, like other players have agreed. They're like... Those these, guys these, are okay in my book. Everyone else is a fucking asshole until they come out and say that because piece of shit. Then you got fuckface over here going, oh yeah, I used to be my one-year-old too. Yeah, you're he, fucking... Get, you're fired then. Yeah, he's a scumbag. And I think... I, if that's true, because I, I will say that's the one I haven't uh, personally substantiated. If that one is true, that's... I don't understand how he's playing this week, you know? But fucking hate football anyway, l- let's let's go on a little bit of a lighter topic. Uh, if you Ooh. guys have comments, if you're if, it, if you're in the and know anything about what's going on or have any opinions, I mean, hopefully you agree with us because I think that just the whole thing's fucked right now. Why don't you but, agree with us? How about yeah. that? So uh, to move on to a little lighter topic, I was this is just something I was thinking about mm-hmm. uh, the other day. Mm-hmm. Somebody mentioned the movie Paul Blart Mall Cop, and then they in the same breath mentioned Observe and Report. And these are two movies that came out in the same year. I've never heard of either of those movies. That both, one had Seth Rogen, one had fucking... Uh, Mall Cop was Seth Rogen. Yeah. No, no, Observe and Report was Seth Rogen. Oh, Jesus. Paul Blart was Kevin James. I don't know if you know Kevin James. Who the fuck's Kevin James? He's on King of Queens. Whatever, I'm not going to waste time with this. Kevin James is a guy. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I've noticed, and I, I'm sure some of you know too, that almost every year in Hollywood, dating back to, you know, the 90s, probably before that, there have been... Movies that have come out, like twi- they're called twin movies, at least on Wikipedia, where there are two movies that come out almost, you know, simultaneously within the same year, that have the same thematic uh, point or the same subject matter. Mm-hmm. And I'll give you, a, I'll run down a quick list here that I wrote down. Quick list, yeah. Snow White and the Huntsman, Mirror Mirror, mm-hmm. both both Snow White movies. Dante's Peak and Volcano, mm-hmm. you might remember those. Ants and Bugs Life. Mm-hmm. President's Daughter with Katie Holmes and Chasing Liberty with Mandy Moore, both about the, the President's Daughter. Mm. No Strings Attached and Friends with Benefit. Benefits. Yep, remember that. Uh, the Prestige and The Illusionist. Illusionist yeah. had Edward Norton. You might remember that, those. Deep Impact and Armageddon were both in the same year. Mm-hmm. Gordy and Babe. What the fuck is Gordy? Never heard it's of it. It's another movie about like a talking pig. Didn't make it. I mean, it, some people heard I remember hearing about it. Okay. Recently, After Earth and Oblivion, both movies about like a, a post-apocalyptic Earth. People are coming... It's like kind of sci-fi after Earth. One had Tom Cruise, one had Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Finding Nemo and Shark Tale, both like Pixar dream type movies, like computer animation about fish, talking fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down. And this is like the crazy part is that these movies, mm. nobody's made a movie about, you know, the White House being taken over by terrorists and being destroyed like for a while. And yeah. then all of a sudden two movies come out almost back to back. Yeah. And that's how all of these are. 
Like, they're usually movies that haven't been made in, like, a little while, and then suddenly two come out. Mm-hmm. They're exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And the last one is there have been two Hercules movies in the last year. Hercules. Yeah. And there, have been, there hasn't been a Hercules thing since, like, Kevin Sorbo was on. Yeah. It's like, why why now? It's just weird. What is the deal with that? So, I don't know. I, I want to know if anybody's in the biz who, like, knows how this happens. Uh, my theory, or at least kind of what I hear, is people get word of other scripts from other studios. There's a little bit of corporate espionage, mm-hmm. probably. A little yeah. Paying people to, like, spy from other studios. And they're like, oh, shit. That sounds like a good idea. Get a script out earlier, but make it different. Yeah, maybe, like, they undercut. Beat them to the box office. Right, yeah. But I feel like you can usually tell which one's the one that's undercutting. You know? Like, uh, usually it's the worst one. I mean, like, like some of these are obvious. Like, A Bug's Life was Pixar. I'm guessing Ants, which I think is DreamWorks. Like, they probably heard they're, they're making a Bugs movie. Like, oh, shit, we're going to make a movie about Bugs, too. Well, fuck them, we're going to make a Bug movie. Yeah, that's my yes. Little, so I don't know, but it's it's yeah, That is weird. interesting. I remember, yeah, I remember some of those that happened. And there are more than this. You can look up twin movies on Google, huh? And you'll see that there's a whole bunch of. Them. I think I thought these were the best examples that people might know, but I'm curious how it fucking happens. And I, I noticed it my whole life. This has always been a thing. That's interesting. Yeah, I right? never. Well, I knew the Illusionist and the Prestige. I remember that. I'm like, that's weird. The two magician movies come out. Right, and like, when is the, when have you seen a prominent magician movie before? That? Yeah, with the same kind of like dark, sort of gritty, yep, tricky. It's same, yeah, it's similar movie too. Like, yeah, it's. Yeah, it's weird. That's weird. I don't know what I have, I don't know what to do with it. Even now, the one I didn't point out was I talked about Enemy last week. The Double, which is another movie about like somebody running into their twin, hmm. just came out before, and that's got the Jesse Eisenberg in it, who's playing himself twice. Who's Jesse Eisenberg. He's uh, he was the guy with the Social Network. He played Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. Yeah. So like, there's another weird one. Like, when was the last me? You know, you heard about a movie like that all of a sudden. Hmm. So I don't know if you know anything about it. If you have got some inside scoop, I'm really interested. I'd love to hear more about that. So. Yeah, that's that's interesting shit. I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, what, what else we you got next topic? Well, here? let's go with... Uh, here's what I... This is something I've been thinking about every now and then. Uh, bad video games and how do they get made. Mm. Now, this is more talking about retro games because in the modern day, I know why bad video games get made. They get made because they're just a cash-in. Like, they make a terrible Spider-Man game just to get Spider-Man dollars. It's easy. You know, like, Ubisoft makes a game. It's a piece of shit. Everybody buys it. Whatever. But I'm talking about more like in the old school, like Nintendo, a kind of Atari, where, where you had to really commit to make a game. You couldn't just make a game like you wanted to. You had to really... It was a small production crew. You had to really believe in it. There wasn't really guaranteed money in it at all. You know, like, you wouldn't you would make a game and make a bunch of money. No, why, why do you think that? Because back when Nintendo was just coming up, not everybody had, like, it wasn't... I mean, it was, it was getting there. But compared to today, the video game industry was, you know, 10% of what it is now. Less than that, even. So... You're not getting rich making Halo back on Nintendo. You know what I mean? So consider this, though. Okay. Nowadays, you make a game. It's a possibly a million-dollar investment. Yeah. Right? I mean, you got tons of people working on it. You're right. Like, graphics. Even the shitty Spider-Man caching games you're talking about. Yeah. To make a game like a shitty NES game, I got to imagine the investment's probably all, pretty low. I mean, comparatively. Y- yes. So even if you make... It's more your... You need to be the guy making it. Yeah. And you put in all your time, but there's not like a million dollar budget. But what I'm thinking is, I I agree that although the business wasn't as big, possibly, the the op, the cost, the investment cost was so low that it might be that might that's my theory at least to answer your question. The investment cost was so low, and it was relatively easy to make compared to now mm-hmm. that you could do that, and it would the even if you got a modest return, it'd be enough at that time. Maybe, maybe, but but mm-hmm. but if you make a terrible game back then. You're not going to make any return. Now look at a lot of the shitty games that we bought when we were kids, right? Like we, there are all those like uh, movie tie-ins and shitty games that we. Yeah, bought. those are cash-in pieces of shit. Yeah, I mean, is that not what you're referring to? No, because the movie tie-ins are clear. They're like a movie production company mm-hmm. pays for that. They're like, we need a video game for this on Nintendo immediately, and they they front it yeah. and they make it, and it's a piece of shit, but they market it with the movie. I'm talking about games that are like just bad as fuck. Like, for example, if you watch our Nintendo videos, the game that, like, rung up is Tom Sawyer and The Adventure of Tom Sawyer. That game was a disgusting piece of shit. I'm sure Mark Twain probably found that. (laughs) There's no movie tie in there. It's Tom Sawyer, okay? I mean, I don't know how many kids give a shit, but okay. It's a, you know, it's a book. That was a movie. Well, sure, there's a movie Tom Sawyer, but, like... But maybe that game was tied to the movie. Yeah, maybe. With, 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 uh, wasn't Jonathan Taylor Thomas in that? Fuck, I don't know. The guy who did the, he was in the, he did the voice of Simba in The Lion King was in Home Improvement. No, I know who I know who yeah. JTT is, obviously. But I think he was in that movie. Well, anyway, I know what you're saying though. There are a lot of like shitty random games that. So here's yeah. what, what I'm thinking. There's a game called Solstice mm-hmm. on Nintendo. 
which is a game that I played and I didn't really remember too fondly. It's kind of an adventure game, kind of like Sting Zelda, but you're in a dungeon the whole time and you're trying to save a princess. It has incredible music. Um, I watched a documentary on YouTube where it's a documentary about like this game is being made. And it's like four people and they're all making the game and it shows them really committing all their time to it, like testing it, going, okay, well, we're going to add these new features to it. And they're really caring a lot about this game. They're really giving it all they got to make this game as good as possible. And the game, you know, saw moderate success. But I'm wondering is that if that process happens with every game because do they really care? Or are there people who are just like cashing in on a fucking horrible piece of shit? You know, because Solstice wasn't, uh, it was maybe a cult classic. It wasn't definitely not a, a good seller. You know, it wasn't definitely a popular game. It's, I, I think it's almost a little bit like any industry. We, at least I've never, I've never thought about it this way. It just kind of struck me that, you know, some, sometimes people are just looking for a job. But there are obviously people in the video game industry and in, in all industries who have a passion, right? They're like, this is what I want to do. This is what I, I have a creative vision or I, I really like doing this. But I imagine there's some people who are just like, I went into video games. I don't know if it's what I wanted to do. And yeah. now I'm on this project, and then maybe they don't give a shit. Maybe that's maybe that's how it's yeah, gonna get made. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's it. I guess that's how. And but then you got you got deadlines. You someone's got to put the money out for this stuff. You're right. You're right. That's what I'm saying. These guys in Solstice, they put all their money in. Like we're gonna make a game, or we're gonna bank on it. Like and maybe they hope it's gonna be kind of like the the iPhone world. The yeah. companies start up and they make an and they make an app, and they're like, I'm gonna give it all to this app, and then they make it just a piece of shit yeah. on accident. Is that happen? Like you accidentally make just a horrible piece of garbage? A lot of people, I think who do that kind of thing, they don't understand how much it's going to cost. Which you, you told me this, and I think this might be a nice thing to just drop real quick. Mm -hmm. You Most people don't realize how much it costs to develop like a high quality app for like an iPhone or like, you know? It's half a, half a million dollars. I, I mean, explain a little bit of that because I, I didn't believe you when you first talked. Uh, like you're looking at, you know, like if, if somebody wants to make Angry Birds and you're like, I'm going to make a game that's like Angry Birds. Like, well, okay, you're looking at at least $300,000 to make that game. You need to design, you need developers, you need a lot of developers, you need a lot of testers. You gotta, you know, you, you gotta hire a ton of dudes. This is like a like a fifty person operation to make that. And every and every hour you're paying a dude eighty eighty to hundred dollars. So you got you know thirty fifty guys working on your game. You're paying them all hundred dollars an hour. Add that up. Why so much? That seems like a lot. Developers, man, really? they make a shit lot of money. You you're every, all of us were in the wrong fucking industry. You want to make a lot of money right now? Be become an iPhone developer. Fuck. And I mean, even all the little costs you 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 pay for. If you want to pay for advertising or marketing, that's money. Yep. If you want to trademark and copyright your property, those are lawyers. That's going to be expensive. Yeah, I don't think about that shit. Yeah, but somebody's gonna. And these are all costs that if you want to make a top quality app, something that's really you know the legit shit, mm -hmm. you got to have something. That's so going to cost you money. need a lot of money to make a good app. So yeah, I think a lot of people maybe will start a game. And you see this on Kickstarter now too, where people are like this. Is how much I think my game's going to cost? And then they're halfway through and they go, "Oh, we just ran out of money." Whoops. Yeah. So it's that's, a, that's possible too. And then they got to scrape the bottom of the barrel and hope they come up with something. Yeah, that could happen. You yeah. just, you just put it out, whatever it is. All right, let's, let's do this. Uh, let's put, let's talk about the humble bundle now. Sure. Yeah. Cause we're talking about games. Uh, we're going to, hold on, let me just do the little thing on my computer here. Uh, the humble bundle, you guys know about it. I talked about it last week. The current one is really great. I highly recommend it. They just added four games to it. One of the games chased the race, the sun. It's like a racing game. It's pretty awesome. Here's what I want to, I want to say. Question. It's a question. I, be I believe it. My answer is yes. But does the Humble Bundle devalue video games? Now, what do you mean exactly by this? I mean, like, the Humble Bundle, if you don't know, it's a pay what you want for, you know, X games. Usually six to eight games. You pay whatever you want. Uh, you pay a dollar. You get all the games. Before the Humble Bundle, you had to buy all those games. They were about $15 each. Mm -hmm. and now, the bundle is like $1 for six. So... In my personal, so Papers, Please is my great example. Papers, Please. I played the demo of this game. I loved it. I'm like, I can't wait to buy this game. Then it came out and it was $15 and I saw it. I'm like, I'm going to buy this game. Then I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to wait till it's on a bundle. Then I'll buy that bundle. And I waited for about a year and sure enough, here it is. It's on the bundle right now. So I paid $8 for this bundle and I got Papers, Please. I also got, you know, Loof Rousers. I got this new Race of Sun game. I got a bunch of cool games for only $8. Whereas the value of that whole bundle, now granted, I wouldn't have bought the whole bundle, but Papers, Please, I, I did want, and instead of paying 15 for it full, I waited and paid for the bundle instead. Yeah. And I feel like I'm going to go forward doing that until the bundle's gone. I, I know what you're saying, but I think that to an extent that's true in anything. Like if I want an iPhone, I could buy the newest model now, right? Yeah. Or I could wait a year. Because I know the new one's going to come out and it's going to go on sale for 
a hundred dollars off mm. the next one. Well. Or or even me when I see any new video game come out, and I get I get the value with a humble indie bundle or a humble bundle. It's yep. amazing. But like if I see a new game come out, I go, you know what? I would buy that now, but I know it's gonna be thirty bucks in a month or two months or whatever. So I I also wait. I also do the same thing. I think it's true in almost any property. Mm. Or like movies come on theaters. We're like, yeah, I could go see that now. When you're paying for those games, like yeah, you you wait it. You're fine. But people who pay for games right away, they want that experience right away. They're the people who are paying for that upfront first experience. I, it is kind of crazy though that how how just how cheap they are. I don't think anything else drops quite as much as those bundles. Well, yeah, I mean, they're it's a yeah. huge, it's huge. I mean, your your saying is true. Yeah. You can always wait; it'll go down in price. But this is like I'm not act, like I've never had that thing. Like I buy a game, I'm gonna buy the game. I I've never been like I'm gonna wait six months and buy it then. That's not me. But what is me, though, is the game Shovel Knight currently. It's a game called Shovel Knight, mm-hmm. which I'm interested in. I'm intentionally not buying that game now because I'm very confident it'll be out of bundle soon. I'm not paying for it. It's $25. I'm just not going to buy it. I would have bought it, and if there was no, no such thing as a humble bundle, I would have bought that game. But if you really wanted to play it now, you would. Like, no, like you know Naruto, which we'll talk about later, is expensive now, but it's going to be super cheap in two months. Yeah. It's going to go half price. Mm-hmm. But you bought it because you wanted it now. And I'm sure there are a lot of people who have been waiting for Shovel Knight, and they're going to buy it now. You're right. Now, also, I think that the part of the reason for these humble indie bundles is that, like you, a lot of these people, even though they, they're they interested in things like Papers, Please, they're not going to try them anyway because it's like 15 bucks. I've never really heard of this yeah. game. It's a, it's a gamble. Now these games are exposed to a bunch of people who have never tried mm-hmm. them in the past. There are these small indie developers who well, some people have never heard of. And now it's like, oh, shit, like, these guys are cool. I hope they make another game. Next time they come out with the game, people, you know, that, that name might ring a bell. And now those people go, I love that game. I want to buy their next game. Yeah. It's, it's like an advertisement, too. It does. You get yeah. game like Papers, Please. I, I bought the bundle because Papers, Please yeah. was in it. I discovered Loot Rousers, which I'm in love with, which I never would have under, heard of. It's kind of like piracy in, in, in music where you just – you would discover things. See, I, I think music – and I've seen humble bundles for comics, for books. I think that's really cool. Yeah, it is cool. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I I, I love the humble bundle, obviously. Yeah. But I'm afraid it's just devaluing because because now, like, what's the value of an indie game? That's that's the question. It used to be a, an indie game was twenty to twenty five dollars. Now, now, does somebody subsidize the indie bundles, or they they just put them out there and hope they get money back? I just, I mean, yeah, they just put them out there. I mean, they get, they always get money back. I mean, they make they make a shitload. Like, who who is the comp? Like, there's a humble Wolf, indie comp. Wolf Fire is the company in, in charge of it. Yeah, so I'm, maybe they have some revenue that they put out. You know, they're just saying, hey, like, your game's really hot right now. What if we pay you some money to... Buy it? Not buy, not, buy, not, buy, it? not buy a license, but say, well, we'll pay you some money, why don't you sell your game on the Humble Store, and, you know, you'll get a little money return, so you'll make some money off the game, but you'll also make some money from us selling to you, like a subsidy. Yeah. And then your name gets out there. It's kind of a win-win for everybody. Right? Yeah, maybe that happens. I don't know if it does. I, I don't know. It's just cool. I, I think, but I love it. They I could, love. They could do that. I love the indie exposure. I think indie games nowadays are so cool that like these games that are creative and unique, where everything else is sequels. Mm-hmm. You, know, you got fucking Halo Five. You got mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed Twenty, Call of Duty, which, Battle look, of Honor. They're fine. They're, they're fine. Some of them are good. I mean, obviously, I, I love the Assassin's Creed series and some other stuff. But but the indie games are the ones where the really cool shit is happening. They got the cool things. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, let me just know what you think. Let mm-hmm. us know what you think about that. Uh, you know. I, I support the bundle, but yeah. I'm a little worried about it. Now, in stuff that's kind of uh, trying to get you a deal to buy stuff, there's something that, that's been kind of pissing me off lately. It's limited time offerings of food. Yeah, segue. Did I hear a segue there? Yeah. I think if there's a drinking game for this podcast... Drink when there's a segue. Drink when there's a segue. I like that. We should start making rules up. We should, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so like limited time offers at restaurants. When I say offers, like products, like... Hey, we like the 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 Shamrock Shake mm. is sort of kind of what I'm talking about, like or a McRib. Only those come out at you know seasonally. That's different than what I'm talking about. But that type of thing where it's like, hey, we have this for two months. Come and get it. Now, the worst offender of this in my mind is Taco Bell. Now, okay, look, I, I'm not pretending like I'm going to stop going to Taco Bell because they don't have some certain things. I fucking love Taco Bell. I'm going to keep going. We love Taco Bell. But one of my one of the things that came out of Taco Bell a while ago, like last j like winter ish, was this grilled stuffed nacho thing. It was cheap. It was big. It was delicious, and I fucking loved it. I liked it. It was so good. It was a perfect thing. It filled me up. It was just a, a great snack, and I would go there for it. And then they got rid of it. And here's the thing, Taco Bell. I'm on to you because I know. You still have the ingredients to make this. Don't play with me, Taco Bell. 
you still got the same shit. All your food is the same ingredients. So when you're like, ooh, we don't make that anymore, you're lying to me. I know you can throw lettuce in this thing and some guac and now you have the thing I liked before. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I don't get why companies do that. And you're a marketing guy. You Maybe you got some some insight I don't. But like, I would keep going Taco Bell. Like, you're losing some of my business because you don't have this anymore. And a lot of places do the same thing. You know, like I, Applebee's is pushing some rib platter thing right now. And it's like, yeah, I might go on once to get it because it's limited time. But then I want to, I might want to keep going and now it's gone. I won't go to the Applebee's anymore. Yeah. What, what is the, what is the psychology behind that? Well, I mean, sometimes it's like there's training involved in doing it. So they, they're testing it. So they test a product for a limited time and see how well it sells and they reevaluate. Uh, they don't want to keep it forever because they keep, got to keep buying the ingredients for it and it doesn't sell quite that well. There's something there. What you're saying about Taco Bell though, where they can make it anyway, that's a pain in the ass for that's, sure. That's why they're the worst offender in my mind. Yeah, I mean the only thing is like they might have people in the kitchen who aren't trained in how to make it and they can't ring it up anymore on the register. Like they can make it, but they don't have the bun anymore. They don't want to train people how to make it anymore. There's some stuff there. But they're, yeah, I mean, basically, they're just testing products when they're, you know, and they're seeing if they're successful or not. If you Google, like, secret menus of restaurants, I like that. you'll see that some places are, their secret menu is just a lot of stuff they used to have and now they don't. And people who worked there for, like, 10 years, they know how to make it and they'll tell the rookies how to, how to do it. But Like the McGangbang? Yeah, exactly. Well, they never actually technically had that. But yeah, that's a good example. Or the Quesarito. You had an experience with this, didn't you? This is before Taco Bell was a doing good their, and bad experience that quesarito. With it, yeah. But to, to tell you what a quesarito is, this is before Taco Bell was doing it, but it's a burrito at, at Chipotle wrapped in a quesadilla. So basically the burrito is made out of the quesadilla. But you had, it was like a secret menu. You you couldn't always get I'll it. I'll tell you what happened there is Chipotle shit the bed. Yeah. And Taco Bell has one now in the menu. You're right. Ta- and it's awesome. They they fucked up And that. Chipotle shit. They, they started Chipotle. It was a Chipotle fan phenomenon. Like, yeah. give this quesarito. And Chipotle, like, try to, they try to squash it. But you know what? Quesaritos are going to go away, too. Well, they will. It's going to be the same thing. And I love them, and I wish they would keep them, but they're going to go away because of limited time, stupid fucking option. So I don't get it. I think it's a bad thing. Do you, do you think it's a, a good idea? I mean, I get the idea of, like, testing something out. Yeah. But look at um, Lay's, I think, did a really interesting with their, their flavor chips that have been coming out. They're like, here are four flavors of chips, really cool, unique flavors. Vote for the best one. Mm-hmm. That's, that's I like that. Permanent. I feel like I have some control in that. You can you get a good idea. Like they can tell who likes it, who has a, a, a preference. Yeah, yeah. Instead of just being like, we're gonna get this out and then we're gonna take it away because we feel like it. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what they're doing. They're just not saying it's a contest, but they are. They are pretty much doing that. They're seeing if you are voting. But there's no transparency, and is the problem. If I yeah. knew that, like a certain amount of votes of, of me going there. Well, would what help. if I tell you that that that's what's happening? I might try you know, to go there more that, often. To, to, that, yeah. that is what's going on. So yeah. if you want to go, if you want to personally buy enough. Of your chili cheese Frito things that you're talking about. Now, it's just, to me, though, the problem is there's no transparency and I don't trust it. Like, you're saying that as a, somebody in marketing, yeah. but, like, it's the same idea to me as when I see a homeless person and I'm like, I got $3, three $1 bills in my pocket. Okay. I want to give them that dollar, but I have no faith that they're going to use it for food. I'm afraid they're going to use it for booze or cigarettes, mm-hmm. and I don't want to give them that dollar. Yeah. So if I go give Taco Bell my business for this limited time offer, they hoping spend, they'll they keep spell it. They it all on booze. How do I? Yeah, how do I know they just don't spend it on booze and get rid of the product? Because, and I they mean, make, they make it a quick rush. You just gotta can't. trust me. I hope so. So. Yeah, I, there's a thing there. You know, I like McRibs, but when they go away, it's sad. So I don't. Know, it kind of sucks. I wish the stuffed grilled nacho would come back because it was two dollars and it was delicious and it made my mouth very happy. But it's gone. I love it. everything Taco Bell makes. Yeah, but that's the thing. I'm still gonna go there. They know it. Right. They, they fucking know me. You're going back. They got me by the. Uh, Which one do we want to go to next? Let's talk. Let's let's look at the time real quick. Yeah. What are we at? Oh, we are fine. Uh, why Should we, we talk about? You want to talk about weddings or sounding rods? I want to get sounding rods out of the way. I want to make this quick. I, I had no idea what this. It's was. It's not gonna be quick. Ugh. So listen, if you guys know what sounding rods are, I still don't, to be honest. If you know what a sounding rod is, then you know where we're going. But if you don't know, then you're in for a ride. Why don't you tell me? Here's what's going on here. There's, uh, imagine a, like, uh, I don't know what to call it even, like uh, a shish kebab skewer. Imagine like a long metal, it's metal, it's a long metal kind of toothpick. And it goes into your urethra. That's where it goes. Not, Not maliciously, not stabbed in. It's placed in slowly with lubrication. And it, it's, it's supposed to feel pretty great. It's like a type of piercing, basically. No, it's not a piercing. It's, I mean, the, the, it's well, more like a dildo. 
but it, instead of going into a vagina, it goes into your urethra. So it's not permanent? No, no, no. It's te- it's just one time. Oh thing. my god, I'm uncomfortable. Right yeah, now. well, it's it, definitely. I haven't, you know, I've never done it. Uh, so the reason I'm bringing this up, so uh, you know, being a being a child of the internet pornography age. By by the way, real quick. Yeah, tell them. We you know we have this list. Me and Krasny writing in, and we we'll check in on it and see kind of what topics we're we're thinking about talking about this week. And I looked and saw sounding rods, and I was like, oh, like I should do some research, see what that is. It sounds like a tuning fork. Maybe Krasny wants to talk about music or music or, e- or hearing or something like that. Free audio frequencies. So I'm at work <laughs> at a, in a government building, and I just really quickly um, during a break I Google. Uh, sounding rods <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's urethra dick piercing <laughs> hole and I'm like oh fuck <laughs> got you this time got me real good <laughs> ah got me real good so now I know what it is and now you know what it is so don't google it don't google it and don't google it at work unless you're curious then you can google it but not at work still don't google it at work but so, you got me good. So yeah, so I know what I, I've known what I know what sounding is I've never I've been kind of thinking about it and like what the fuck is that about I know what it is why didn't you fill us in what so what is sounding? Uh, that's putting the rod into oh, your penis. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, sounding okay. is the act of putting something into your urethra with, you know, the rod. That's mm-hmm. that's what sounding is. It's it's a thing for, you know, I don't know. It feels good, I guess? I'm not sure. So anyway, my point of my story is there's a store that opened up over where I work in uptown Minneapolis called Bondesk. And it's this, like, you know, BDSM equipment store. And they sell, like, real hardcore shit. This place is, like, fucking hardcore. And the the windows, it's all, like, blacked out. And the windows have, like, these metallic mannequins. Like, chrome mannequins. With those big heads? No, that was, a, oh, that okay. was H&M. Yeah. No, they're chrome mannequins. And they're all, like, wearing, like, leather, weird leather, leather pig masks. And ropes all over them. And these spiked boots and all this weird shit. So I went in there to check it out. And they have all the usual suspects, you know, like manacles and really heavy looking, you know, nipple clamps and all kinds of crazy shit. The usual suspects. The usual suspects. And then there's (laughs) this one thing, like imagine when a, like a, like a, like a, like a trained assassin unrolls a knife bag and there's all these knives and like this little like unrolled thing. I'm picturing it exactly. It's one of those, but all that's in it are, are little like think chopsticks getting progressively bigger. Oh, I'm so mad at you. Now the biggest one though, here's where you're gonna get you're gonna shit your pants. The biggest one is a hot dog. Oh my god. It's hot dog sized. It's just a hot dog. Um, it's it's a chrome hot dog. That's what I'm looking at here. So the nice the very nice woman there named Muti, mm-hmm. who's the uh, the caretaker of the store. I go, hey, what is that thing right there? What is this? Because I suspected they're sounding rods, but when they get to the hot dog size, I'm starting to doubt it. I'm like, that must be a thing that was in your butt at this point. That's not going in your penis anymore because that's way too big. That's a butt rod. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Oh, that's a sounding set. I'm like, that one right there? She goes, yeah, you got to work up to it. I'm like, well, my dick's barely that big. Now I'm going to put a hot dog into the urethra? I imagine it's like gauging your ears, you know? It is like that, yeah. but Jesus, does that make your dick like enormous? Maybe that's what it's for. That's weird. How do you pee when, you're, when your urethra is the size of a hot dog? You just tr- like a waterfall? Did you did she answer your questions? I didn't ask. I wasn't shouting these questions. I was just like I was in shock, thinking, "How do you get a hot dog into your dick?" I want to know, but I don't. I really we don't. could Google it. Biggest sounding rod. But this is gonna be like we watch, when we watch this a Serbian film. We get real Christ. drunk. Otherwise, I can't handle it. So look, guys, if you have any experience with that, I would love to hear about it. I mean, I'm t- I'm much too terrified to try. Much too terrified. Yeah, no, I'm never gonna try. But I, I'm curious. If you don't know what it is, that, that that's people do that shit. That's I weird. I I, weird. I thought I was a pretty well versed in like the world of of sexual fetishism. I thought I heard about most of this stuff. Or hell, you know, you read Fifty Shades of Grey, so I mean, you you probably know it all. All of it. But <laughs> but I'd never heard of sounding, which blows my mind that I've never. There is a there's something weird enough than me in the modern day of the internet who like is very you know in I've been on Reddit, I've been on fucking Reddit space sticks, and I've never heard of sounding rods. Space sticks. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact, I guess you'll learn something new every day. So have you heard about this? Have you heard about Microsoft buying um, Ma- Mojang? Mojang, uh, the guy who made Minecraft. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld. I have heard about this. Why Seinfeld? You haven't, this is bad. He's like, yeah, have you heard about this? You heard about this? This oh, is literally his bed. Yes, okay. Yeah, sorry, I don't mean to make fun of you. That's fine. Yeah. So yeah, so my, I, I did hear about this. Minecraft, maybe you've heard of it. Uh, it's a pretty popular game from about two years ago. Apparently it's still popular. It's still popular, sure. Um, so Microsoft decided it'd be a good idea to buy that company. Guess how much? I know it was a lot of money. Two and a half billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Two and a half billion dollars. 
Now, this news coming about a, a month after Microsoft laid off 20,000 employees. I did not know that, and now I'm pretty upset. Yeah. They, 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 dis, they, they, uh, uh, dis, de, uh, what's D, D what? D, destroyed, D, downsized. disassembled. D- downsized. They removed their entertainment division. 20, it was 18,000 employees. That was a fucking city. They laid them all off. They just, the whole division gone. I didn't even hear about that. Yeah, that happened about a month ago. Wow. And then this news breaks. And then they buy, then he spent two and a half billion dollars buying fucking Minecraft. I didn't, I was wondering why you put this on here, but that's. So here's why I put it on here. Microsoft, uh, I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Uh, they make a lot of bad decisions. And there, a lot of times when a company seemingly makes a bad decision, uh, you, you got to kind of step back and go, look, they probably know better than you. We talked about this last week. They probably know what they're doing. But with my, when it comes to Microsoft, I'm not so sure. Because the Xbox One came out as a fucking joke. They and, screwed that up. And I believe it's been a joke going forward. They botched it completely. They've been unable to salvage it. That you know, I mean, yeah, the Destiny's on it. They're well, it's on PS3 too. Yeah, but they're, they're behind for sure. They fucked it up. They had no reason to be so fucked, but they are because they made a lot of mistakes. Then they went ahead and uh, laid everybody off. Now they're buying Minecraft. Now I want to just think about this fucking play. Here's the thing about Minecraft. Okay, the game's got no monthly subscription. You gotta buy it. You know, it's about, it's twenty euro. That's how much the game costs. So twenty five bucks, whatever, twenty thirty dollars. Um, everybody already has it. I was gonna say is that I imagine everybody who's wanted to play Minecraft, it's yep. on iPhone, it's on every phone, it's on every console, mm-hmm. it's on computers, it's on whatever you want it on. They have it. If you've wanted it, you probably have it. The reason I don't have it, I don't want it. Exactly. You know about it. You didn't buy it. Are you buying it now all of a sudden? No. And so unless they, I mean, maybe they're going to add a bunch of shit to it, but I don't know. I, I just, it doesn't really make there, much There sense is me. no market more saturated than Minecraft. 100% of the population who cares about Minecraft already has paid for Minecraft. They're all done paying for it now. And the thing is, the, isn't the whole idea of the game that it's just an open world you can basically do anything in? Yes. So it's not like, I mean, you can add some content, but basically the, the game is just do whatever you want, and you That's can right. already do whatever you want within the, the boundaries of the universe they've created. Right. There's, Microsoft has no, they have no plays with, with Minecraft. They have no fucking plays. They can make in-app purchases now, like, oh, I'm going to release a bunch of cool hats. No one's buying them. What they'll do instead is just make their own hats and make them free. And, it, and if they try to make it so you can't get free stuff out, they'll just quit playing the game. The type of people that love Minecraft, they love open world games. They're not gonna, they're not gonna be involved if you're like gonna shut it down. You know I what mean, I mean? In this situation, I'm hoping that I, I'm kind of with your original thought that there are people who are smarter than me, so they must have some kind of plan. Fuck, man, you gotta hope. It's that. gotta be a plan beyond just buy it. You gotta hope that. Actually, when you said about the hats, I mean, you follow Team Fortress Two at all? Yes, that's why I said the hats. I mean, is that their plan, or you just, you just made that up off the top of your head? The hat uh, thing. Oh, there's no plan for... I don't know what Microsoft's plan is. I mean, oh, so I, I, thought, I know hats... Gonna, they've proven to be successful selling hats. I was going to say, like, some cool type of, you know, hat or costume. Or, but, yeah, yeah. But you're right. I mean, but mo- the thing if, is, if it's on PC, PC modders can make Yeah, not work. just anybody can make a hat on Team Fortress. But the whole point of Minecraft is anybody can make a new pet or a new, uh, you know, suit. Mm. Or it, it almost seems like some guy in Minecraft... I mean, some guy in Microsoft's like, hey, what could we buy... What's hip nowadays? And then, oh, Minecraft. I heard that was, my, my uncle, my nephew likes Minecraft. Maybe that's something good. Okay, buy it. You know what, you know what my favorite memes is? What? Uh, the meme where it's like a like a cartoon. There's like exec- executives in an office. And it's, it's guys, what can we do to up sales right now? And one guy says like, like something stupid. One guy says something stupid. One guy says a good idea. And everybody glares at him. And then the next picture is him being thrown out a window. Have you seen that one? No. I'll show it to you after this if you've, if you've seen this meme. But I feel like like somebody was probably like, ah, guys, already, I think everybody already has Minecraft. They, oh, threw, they, him threw, him out the, the they threw him out the window. Yeah. And then uh, our boy, uh, Pr- Presson, Notch, that's the guy that owns Minecraft. Uh-huh. People are like kind of saying, well, he's not, it's really unlike him to sell out like that and like, because he's really indie and whatever. Two billion. I'm like, yo, everybody's got the price. You know what I mean? When, yeah, you can, like, yeah. when you can buy his whole family a million dollar mansion and not give a fuck, yeah. that's when you sell out. <laughs> but, but, but the thing is, from his point of view, I'm, I'm imagining him, Minecraft, Minecraft calls and goes, yo, uh, Presson, we kind of want to buy your company. And then he's like, these fucking guys are my, I want to buy them. I'm going to give them a number so ridiculous. Yeah. They're going to like just be scoff at it. I'm like, two and a half billion dollars. And they go, deal. And he just shits his pants right there and goes, uh, okay. And yeah. then he just sells the whole company and they give a fuck. Now, here's the thing about this guy. He's already made every fucking, he's extracted maximum value from Minecraft already. Yeah, he's already doing very well. Everybody right has it already. Okay, it's a huge successful game and people love him. And didn't, didn't he 
makes some big statement. He's like, I'm not going on this system or I'm not associating with something because of like something they didn't like. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. This, sounds I know, like I know that sounds stupid. It sounds like him, said, but, but I don't know. I know there's some story where he made like a, a stand because of some principle of his. Maybe. So that, that's what I'm saying. Like It sounds like he's a principal guy. Yeah. So... I mean, you're right. Like everybody's got their price, two billion. Is, yeah, but here, here's what's gonna happen to him though. Now he's gonna start a new company, and just make a new game. Yeah. And everybody who likes Minecraft is gonna buy his new game regardless. Like Microsoft bought an empty name of a company. Okay, they it, bought Minecraft. People like it, but that's done. Like the money, there's no more money in that. You know, it's it's interesting. Like in in the comics world, you don't buy a comic. I mean, like if you're if you're Marvel, I don't buy a pro comic property. I buy a writer. Okay. Right, I buy this guy who has a really good track record of writing, and okay. I have him write Wolverine for me, and yeah. make Wolverine popular. And it's like, why buy Minecraft when you can buy the developer and have him work for you, mm-hmm. and have him create cool, cool properties for you? Yes. Like, uh, the guy, like, oh, Cliff Blazinski, I think he did... Gears of War. Gears of War, but he started doing, he first did Quake. Mm-hmm. So, like, Microsoft, and like they and they, they hired him, and yeah. he, he got... He much Gears better, that's a much better play. They didn't just buy Quake and were like, go do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. What are you going to do with Quake? You don't have the guy who made Quake. Yeah. Now, the people are like, well, maybe they'll make Minecraft too. Okay, they don't have the guy who made Minecraft. Now, they're going to make Minecraft 2 blind on their own. Second off, no one's buying Minecraft 2 because it's fucking Microsoft made. Okay? Not that they hate Microsoft, but the people who are into Minecraft... People will buy it still. Right? Well, yeah. sure, some people will buy it, but like the, the, the guys who are into Minecraft, they're like indie dudes. They don't like Microsoft. Look, the, my theory is they'll probably make money on it in, at some point in the long run. Here are some numbers I wrote down. Oh, okay. Right here, I got yeah. this little numbers. The, I, I got an excerpt from uh, Simple Google, how much money did, did Minecraft make? Uh, I have right here, this is as of 2009. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, 2011. Oh, shit. Minecraft may, sold PC on PC 14 million copies. Now, there's also all this, all the counts. There's other stuff, the but out. okay. So 14 million copies at about $25 each, that's $300 million. Mm-hmm. Just for fun... Let's double that, because iPhone, iOS, Mac, let's double it. Well, fuck. Let, you know what? Let's just say that everything they made it to a billion. Let's go crazy. A billion dollars. And you're right. They still. They're not even close. They would have to find a whole new user base. Right. Yeah. So up to up to now, in the whole time, Minecraft's whole history, they've made a billion dollars, and that's you know an optimistic estimate. Yeah. Uh, everybody already has it. There's no monthly subscription. There's no in-app purchases. There's no way to get money from those people anymore. They already have it. Well, not yet. I guess they're going to have to figure some way out. Yeah. yeah. So now Microsoft Which is just... going to hurt the game. Now they paid two and a half times what every other copy ever has been paid for to get the name of Minecraft. For fucking what reason? Now what, Microsoft? I, I mean, are they going to... like? Think about Angry Birds. Like Angry Birds is just Angry Birds. Sure. And then they did Angry Birds Star Wars. Angry Birds is this. They made a thousand Angry maybe Birds. They, maybe they're going to do some weird thing. Minecraft, like yeah, Minecraft Indiana Jones. Yeah, shit. yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's something I could say. Like Lego. Like Lego everything. Minecraft everything. Yeah. I, I'm just I'm just spitballing here. But they're, but the, the amount of effort they're going to have to put in hoping they get an investment is pretty extreme. Whoever that guy is, he's got a lot of pressure to put up. They shouldn't him. have thrown that guy out the window. Well, maybe they kept that guy and now he's got a year to fucking make this money back. Because yeah. good luck, man. Now, meantime, Notch is going to go make a new game and, and make another $2 billion. And you would trust Microsoft a lot more if they hadn't just proven they're inept. And they're one of their biggest sellers, the, the Xbox. Mm-hmm. They just proved they don't know what they're doing with their one of their huge money makers, one of their huge platforms. Obviously, they, you know, they have service and PCs and whatnot. But I can't trust them right now. And you're right. Like, I don't know if this Microsoft is professional bed shitters. So this is, this is gonna be something to watch. This is, I actually I, at first I read this and I thought, who cares? But that's a that's a very interesting. Yeah. Part. Well, think about but, it. I, I, and I don't want to gloss over the whole fact that they laid off 20,000 people to probably to buy this, to afford this. Maybe. I mean, there, there's got to be something. Yeah, point. if you guys don't know, I mean, I was bitching about this a while ago, uh, not in the podcast, but they laid off 18,000 people, like, not a month ago. Or even even if that's not the reason, those people have got to be thinking, fuck, I could have kept my job if you just... Not bought Minecraft? Or if you had bought it for $1.8 billion. Like, did you have to go $2 billion? Like, is that... I, don't, I mean, Maybe, fuck Yeah, up. it's fucking stupid. So, Microsoft, good fucking luck. Now, this is dumber than fucking Amazon making a phone. Now, the last thing I want to say to you mm. is you actually mentioned this to me once or something else. I think it was with WhatsApp or, or something like that. When yeah. WhatsApp was bought for a lot. Yeah. Why don't companies do... I mean, I guess it's the bottom line dollar, but you thought... You said to me, look, they bought it for $2 billion, right? Let's say... Is it crazy that... Microsoft would go, hey, we're only going to take $1.95 billion mm-hmm. and give that remaining amount to a charity. That'd be great. The And then nobody would be talking about this aspect. Nobody would be talking about the people they laid off. Nobody would be talking about the ridiculous price. They'd be like, hey, how cool is it that 
Microsoft donated that that small percentage of this huge amount yeah. to charity. Right. And, I think that would be great. As part of the deal, like when you're switching billions, yeah. throw a hundred grand to like fucking cancer awareness. I'm sure Notch and like if Notch is like, no, I want all that money, then leak you know, leak it to the media. I'm sure he'll get out there somehow that he yeah. tur- he was so douchey. He wouldn't do that though. Yeah, and he, he probably wouldn't. But if that, you know, like there's just do it. It'd be so such good publicity. I don't That'll know why be, more companies don't do it. Great that. publicity, yeah, it would be. It was a good But move. it's a greedy just, bottom line thing. Yeah, to, I, to me, I, I guess. Get I my, yeah, I mean it for sure is. So, Fuck those guys, man. Fuck those companies. Yeah. So let's uh, let's move on, but that's some. That's some <sighs> let's talk about thing. weddings for a while. Yeah, this this is uh, what you were just talking about. Good things for weddings. I want to give some tips. Yeah, uh, I've been going to a lot of weddings. I'm at I'm at I'm at that age. I'm about there too. I'm where everyone's married. getting married. I'm. I mean, I just had a wedding. My wedding. You were there. You know, I, I hope I did a good job. You know, uh, I did pretty good. I'm not gonna bullshit you. My wedding cost four thousand dollars. Yeah, you did. You had a very frugal wedding, and for what it for what you plan to do you nailed it yeah it was only four thousand yeah. dollars and when i hear stats like the average wedding price is like 30 grand fucking who where are you getting that kind of money i mean well where are you getting it or where are you putting it i can tell you where you're, no, putting where you're getting it i want to know where the average wedding in in the midwest is thirty thousand dollars i mean I, I fucking who's average fucking wedding? loans credit cards people save Jesus for it Christ. but usually usually you know who it is it's parents parents yeah yeah i mean parents are like a lot of parents save for that event, or they oh. they you know they're they're more well off than the kids who are getting. Oh uh, well, there. I mean, if I fucking. But let's so. let's let's talk about best wedding practices. Best practices. Aside from money is not an issue right now. So here's what here's a couple things. Or maybe ways to save money, whatever. First off, only your weddings and your wedding and reception have to has to be one day. Absolutely. Don't fuck around with this day one reception, day two wedding fucking bullshit. Unless you do a destination wedding, but I'm against those two personally. That, that point two, fuck a destination wedding. Yeah. And fuck you two for having one. <laughs> It's really inconvenient to people. It is. It's awful. And it's great for you, but you're already planning this beautiful vacation. Yeah, that's before. your honeymoon, bitch. Yeah. If you want to do a small, like, like 10, 10 person, you know, close family destination wedding, fine, do it. But okay. if you want to invite me to a wedding in Hawaii, I can't take a week off of work for that. Oh, pay for the fucking ticket to go to Hawaii. Yeah, and don't guilt trip me. I mean, if I'm your friend, I want to go to your wedding, yeah. but I can't do that. It's, it's rude to your friends. Yeah. It's rude. And the whole two-day thing, get, let people have their fucking weekend. You know what I mean? You can't, like, t- gobble people up for an entire weekend. Make them come, and then make them come again the next day. How about this? Tell me if you don't like this. Give your ideal wedding, and I'm gonna give my ideal wedding real quick. My ideal wedding? Yeah, your 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 day. What you know, things you think that are important throughout it. I mean, you're basically doing this, doing that now, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So my ideal wedding is a real short, a real short ceremony. The reception is at a, a nice public friendly place close by, with parking. You drive there and you just have a great time. Op- uh, free booze. I think there's got to be, got to be open bar. Got to be. But it doesn't have to be all open bar. I'll agree. Now, there are variations of how you can do this. You can either do just wine and beer, which a lot of people do. That, that's fine. Or the preferable one, if you could afford it, is a full open bar. Mm-hmm. But if you if you think you can't afford an open bar, there's ways to, to do it, but without you know breaking the bank completely. You can do it. You can tell the bartenders, you can go, hey, up to a certain dollar amount. Once you hit this dollar amount, cash bar. And I've seen people do that. Uh, Megan Pete did that at their wedding. Yeah. Right. Okay. Or you say, "Hey, like to a certain time, open bar," mm-hmm. and then later in the night you you do cash. Okay. So people can get a nice buzz, get an early buzz, get drunk, and throughout the evening they'll they'll start paying. Those yeah. are ways to to do that without looking completely cheap, without having your guests not have any fun. Yeah. But I agree with you. That's very key. Yeah. Oh, you gotta have the booze. You yeah. can't have no booze. Uh, what else is there that I I I think music is one of my big priorities in a wedding. Gotta have it. Now you can have a live band, but. I think you gotta at least have a DJ with that band. So my ideal, if you're gonna have a live band, if this is a big thing for you, do the live band, have them take breaks, because they want to party too. You know, live, the band wants to hang out and have some drinks and food too. And during those breaks, have the DJ come on and play some like jams, some dancing jams. And the live band come out and play, you know, the, the classic uh, fucking shout, and they can play uh, Hey, hey Carol- Here's Carolina and all that stuff, you know? What the, what's the fucking song? I don't hey, know. Hey, Hey Carolina. Wow, hey, hey Carol, I don't know. Build me a buttercup, all that stuff. You know, all the classic wedding songs. Hey, I don't know. Well, shout, you know, shout. Shout, I know. Yeah. So, like, so they can play those, and the DJ can play that stuff. But if you have a DJ, then just have them play good music. That's key. You want people out there dancing, having a good time. In my opinion, that's, yeah. that's priority. For yeah, me. that's good. Uh, have some food. Now, what do you think of a buffet? I think people say they're tacky. I love the buffet. Idea. Well, who who would say that? Fuck those people. I think that's stupid. In fact, my experience is buffet food. The weddings I've been to that have some kind of catered buffet whether it be a restaurant or, you know, some whatever, are always the food is way better than when I get, like, a meal. 
Because my experience with a meal, if you're getting like like some company comes in, like you have three options, and the three options are they make them and they sit out under heat lamps and yeah. they get to you and they're dry and That's overcooked. That's it. They got to bring those fucking tr- carts yeah. out with those covered things and they get, they're too cold and dry by the time they get to you. The salad's all wilted up. And you don't tip so the people are always miserable for some reason. They don't get it. Because you're not tipping. And them. they don't give a fuck. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. They don't, they're so rude always. Buffets are better and then everybody gets their fill. The, the, then you got, you know, people who want to eat a lot versus people who don't want to eat very much and yeah. you get one plate. Those people are, are sad. Whereas the buffet, it balances out perfectly. I mean, it's it's good. And, and it's always nice and well cooked, and they're restocking, and they're, it's like yeah, they, yeah it's they fresh. Go, it goes fast. It's so much better. I people say they're tacky. I couldn't agree less or disagree more. You know, couldn't agree less. Couldn't agree less. <laughs> really blew that. And one. then uh, yeah, uh, I, I, went, I disagree with them. I recently went to a, a a breakfast wedding. Oh, it was it was awful. Okay, good. <laughs> no, now you could do an evening with breakfast themed. I would. Yeah, no, it was an that. early wedding. It was early, like like yeah, that's like, a like ten. That's a rude move. It's rude. And talk, then talk about timing real quick. What's your ideal time? Well, okay, you you it's got to be. I mean, it, it's got to be after like two. Put in a more. Like three o'clock is the three to four. Three is to four perfect. is good. Even later, like seven to eight. If you're doing the whole late night drinking one, that's fine. I think there should be like four o'clock, with like an hour and a half maybe break. You know, because there's always people moving and traveling and whatever. Okay. And then you get to the reception. You you sit down. You mingle for a bit. And like at six or six thirty is the food. Yep, that sounds perfect. Yep. And then after the food, there's some toast and stuff. And then you got the party. I like that. But it should be close. And, and also the reception should be close to the ceremony. Yeah, right. it's got to be close. We you should can't be, be quick. We yeah. can't be fucking around going far. But yeah, so I went to a breakfast wedding, and then the food was all it was like dessert. What the fuck? Why have a breakfast? So it's not even a breakfast wedding. Well, it was like croissants and, and fruit and muffins and orange juice. So it was. But a, no, there was no hash browns and on. omelets. It was and, a continental breakfast. That's the shit you go in a hotel. It was a yeah. You're right. It was. You had a continental breakfast for a wedding. That's the most yeah. basic shit. I've ever yeah, heard. I mean, it was it was fine, but like I'm hungry. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to eat food. I'm not gonna eat a fucking. Muffin. And you're here early. I mean, look, I know you think that this day is about you, and it is. But when think it, about the it's, others. It's a, well, it's about you. You want your guests to have a good time because that that make that reflects good on you. It reflects well on you. When your guests have an amazing time and they talk about that wedding for years, that they're like, "Oh man, Susie threw an amazing wedding. She's the best. We love her. Yeah, that was awesome." And like she was so happy, I could tell she was beaming, having the best time of her life. But if your wedding is a miserable continental breakfast and every you know nobody talks to me like, "Oh man, that was yeah," insane. I mean, I, you know, it wasn't terrible, but it's just like there wasn't it wasn't any food. Yeah. You know, it was all dessert. I'm hungry. I want to fucking. I want some like eggs and 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 hash browns and fucking pancakes. Warm. It's all cold. You know what I mean? Like, where's the fucking heat? You gotta. F- no you heat. gotta fill me up, man. No heat. So there's just some tips. So keep it to one day. Have an open bar. If you can't afford an open bar, you're not ready to get married. I I love that. I agree. That's it, boys and girls. Yeah. And if you want to, you know, here's a trick. Get to. It's hard to have an open bar because you gotta pay the fucking bar people. Find a way to just have a wedding somewhere where you can just bring your own booze. Find yeah. a way to do it. Russians do that all the time. Russians yeah, Russians. it's you can do it. You know, find a find a restaurant and like get to know the manager and like find a way to just get your own booze in there. Agree that like, hey, if we have a bottle on every table, but we do an open bar and we we still pay some of your restaurant, like let's mm-hmm. let's have a mix here. You know, what you don't want is you don't want to pay a professional bartender because then you're getting fucked. Yeah, you don't want to get fucked. I, I like just whatever you do, don't half-ass a wedding. If you if you're right, if you can't have the the right wedding. Don't I mean I don't think you're ready to do the wedding. Don't even bother. Yeah, just don't do it. Do know? do a, a a quaint ceremony. Do a ceremony, have a party. Cause why why do a half ass party if you're if you don't if you can't do it right? It's, it's true. If, if if and if it's the love and the the getting married is important to you, then just do a small tiny thing with your family and, fr- and close friends. Cause you don't have to invite all these people who feel guilty if they don't come and have to pay money to bring you gifts for a shitty wedding. I'm sorry, but that's how it is. If you think if you think of more great, great tips, write in. Wedding tips. Yeah. Write them in. Uh, What's up? It's been a while since we did a fashion a fashion piece. Yeah, we kind of been slacking. So I found this blog post, which I will be linking to in the information down below. Uh, and it's about rules in fashion that you should break, you can break, that other people have broken successfully. They're kind of like the urban myths of the fashion world. So let's go, let's go down the list. I wrote them all down. We'll go down the list and we'll talk about how we feel about them. Yeah. Rule number one. That you can break. Don't mix different patterns. I say yes, you can break that. Mixing patterns is okay for advanced users. It is for advanced users, guys and girls. These rules I want to talk about first. Here's how they work. There's two kinds of people in the world. And I'm not saying I'm one or the other. I'm not making a claim like I'm above. But here's what it is. There's people who understand fashion. 
And there's people who know how to follow the rules. They don't understand fashion. My girlfriend talks about this all the time where she goes, there's a difference between having your own fashion style and picking an outfit off a mannequin. Y- yes, that's what it is. Yeah. So if you don't want to get into it, if you don't want to like figure it out, then you're better off just following the rules. If you want to be fashionable and kind of you know go on your own, then you can break the rules. And you got to but you got to know what you're doing. You know, it's like that's the way it is. So that's kind of where we're coming from here. But here we go. So don't mix different patterns. There's some you definitely cannot mix. There there is a there is a a code, like a, a series of rules for what patterns clash but look good together. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Like like some like if, for example, a gingham, gingham is like small checkered kind of small is that checkered is that how you say it yes very small checkered like a grid it's like a grid on a shirt like a plaid but not plaid you can do that with a striped tie mm. that is a good pattern like that's a classic one like a thick a very thick bold t- line tie that's a classic one that a lot of people don't do but you should could do it yeah yeah I saw one yesterday uh, it, it was a a, ch- a checkerboard shirt mm-hmm. and then a diagonal checkerboard tie that's a big no no that's because you can't have the same pattern is too much. You can't do that. That's yeah. too, it's too crazy. Next one. Match your belt to your shoes. Uh, one last addendum to the other thing. Not only clashing patterns, but I will say clashing textures or mixing textures. That's an interesting one. Like a, like a shiny shirt with a knit tie. That's an advanced. I'm not saying that's the move, but what's the rule? The rule is you can't max ma- ma- text match. Mix textures? I don't, know, I don't know if it's a rule, but it's something I think a lot of people don't really think about. Mm. That there's different textures to shirts and ties. There is texture. And that mixing them in certain combinations have certain effects. Well, I would say that a, a new texture is kind of like a new pattern. Like a knit tie, the knit itself is almost like a pattern. Fair enough, yeah. You know, so, so you gotta something be careful. Consider. Or like a, flannel, like a flannel tie looks nice and it's like a shiny shirt. Yeah? Yeah. So it's also something to think about. Match your belt to your shoes. I, I absolutely think you this you should not break this. Now there are some thing there are belts that are not okay. The thing is what shoes you have black shoes and brown shoes, maybe navy shoes maybe. Maybe I think. Yeah. What if what if you got a bright green belt? What are you gonna do? <sighs> okay, you're right. So I was thinking about this in the, in the context of brown and black. R- brown and black, you got to match. You should never, in my opinion, ever mix brown and black. Belt like black belt, brown shoes, right. black shoes, brown belt. Can't Never do that. do that. You gotta match those up. But like a white, a white belt, black shoes. Mm-hmm. I am okay with that. Or a, or or like yeah, or like a red belt with you know any. I mean, brown shoes, red belt yeah. works fine. But like belts can come in weird accent colors. You're not. You don't need to match those to your yeah. shoes because who's got fucking teal shoes all of a sudden? Nobody. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you that. So when you have a weird belt, you can rock it. You know, just rock it. What's next here? Don't wear a suit without socks. I've never run into this one before. Yeah, me either. Um, but I think you can. If that's a rule, I think you can break. Like boat think, shoes. Like boat yeah, shoes look good. You, you can. Do, I think that's fine. It's it's definitely a light look. You're you're not. You're kind of doing a casual thing. Like, it's a casual. It's a summer thing. look. Where you're like really really going loose. Yeah. But you can do don't it. wear shorts with a blazer. I, I think you should not break. I mean, I can't really picture it. I haven't seen pictures of it. This this website you'll see. So you're wearing a blazer. Like, and then shorts. I mean, why would you take the blazer off? Then? It looks weird to me, in my head. Yeah, but, it looks like maybe, it looks like you're you forgot you put your pants on. If I if I saw a picture, maybe I could picture it better. But I don't like in it. my head, I say no. Go I ahead, say, don't don't I break say, that one. I say yeah, stick to that. Don't room. wear brown shoes with a black suit. I disagree. I I think. All right, I think yes, you can break this. A little confusing. We're doing like a backwards. Mm-hmm. I think you can break this. I think you can wear a black black suit, brown shoes, brown belt. Black suit, brown belt, brown shoes. See the brown belt, black suit. That's fucked up. Brown belt, brown shoes, black suit. Yeah, I don't like it. Or brown suit, black belt. I, in fact, I do this. I have a, like an espresso suit. Like it's a very dark brown that almost looks black, but like you'll mm-hmm. notice it's like, it's like espresso. It's like chocolate, like a mm. big chocolate. When you say the word espresso, I would like that. Right? So I mean, maybe maybe that's cheating a little bit. Maybe there. Yeah. If you have an espresso suit, that'd but, be fine. But I think my, my, win, my, my ace up my sleeve here, my winning argument for this is Rottweiler's. Brown and black, they, they brown look, and black, baby. They look great. They look great. Brown and black, nature wins. If if it's in nature, you can wear it. That's yeah. a good rule of thumb, I think. I like that, right? That's good. Yeah. Boots are only for casual wear. Um, I don't really have an opinion on this. I don't agree. I, I it depends on the. I mean, it depends on the boots. If your boots can pass for formal shoes, then you're fucking in the gold. So you're saying, yeah, you can break this rule. Yeah. yeah. If you're if you're wearing like fucking goth ass, you know, big lace to the knee boots, then yeah, you probably shouldn't be wearing those in in your office, but. Short sleeve shirts are passe. So it's the, not really a rule. 
Uh, but uh, I think sh- they're talking about button-up shirts. Button-up short sleeve shirts. I think they're fine, especially in the summertime. Now, the, the picture on the website is literally the – like I don't know if it's the same guy, but they all look the same. It looks it's like some guy. guy out of Sons of Anarchy with a beard and tattoos. Huge tattoos. And he's wearing different short sleeve shir- shirts with a vest, but like button-up and then a vest over it. And he looks like the coolest guy in the world who could literally wear a sweater vest and still be cool as fuck. So I feel like they're cheating a bit. I don't know if most people can pull this you off. You can – I mean a, a short sleeve button-up shirt? Yeah, but I, I think – it depends on the look you're trying to pull off. We've talked about this. Yeah. Like if you're trying to look a little more casual, a little more kind of uh, it, hipstery. It's casual, know. but it's not. I wouldn't say it's passe. I guess I don't know. I I still think it's. I'm not for it. Don't wear a sweater vest with a suit. Disagree. Sweater vests are dope. Wear them all the time. It's a sick look. With you gotta a suit without you gotta a do suit. it right. There's still rules to it. Wear but, it, man. Just do it. Yeah. Office shoes must be basic and neutral. No. Uh yeah, I don't think so. I mean, this is one of those. Uh, Maybe maybe for a certain job. Like you'll I can't go to court with really weird teal shoes. shoes. Yeah, you you're, you'll be drawing attention to yourself definitely. So you gotta know what you're doing. But I think I think you're really good at this. I love it. Yeah, you wear like you know white leather moccasins. And I wear shit. weird yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, and people like it. Yeah, like, yeah, it looks this good. guy looks what he's doing. Is he doing a good job? Yeah, that's the voice they do for sure. They do that voice. Yeah. Don't wear suspenders because they are old fashioned. Nah. Look, belts are for losers. Suspenders are for winners. So, whatever. Suspenders are dope. They're dope. Fact. And you can wear crazy color suspenders, and yeah. they're totally legit. Rainbow suspenders oh, by this blender. Uh, love no, it. Rainbow, I mean, generally, suspenders are cool. I think they're a cool look. You can pull it off right. Not just for old country and gentlemen. They're, they're, they're coming back, but no one knows it yet. We should talk about this sometime. Fashion is cyclical, and I 100% believe that's true. Oh, yeah. For so sure, we, we, we'll get more in depth another time. We'll talk about What's that. next year? Uh, don't okay. address your boss. You <sighs> should, I mean, you always say dress for the job you want. Not the job you have. <sighs> nice one. They say that. Now, I always say that, you know, competition breeds excellence. And if your boss wants to look good, you should, you know? Well, the hand. thing is, like, okay. I, I get it. You shouldn't embarrass your boss by looking better than that. I mean, that's, okay, what is your boss wearing that you can embarrass him? You know yeah, what I mean? I like, that either. Like, your boss is wearing a suit and you're wearing a suit too? Are you addressing your boss? If, if, you're, if your boss is wearing, you know, sweatpants and, like, a ratty yeah, t-shirt, Yeah, if he's then a douchebag, then... You're in a weird job and, like... He shouldn't care if he doesn't care that much. Then who cares? Look, if you're dressed well yeah. enough to out outdress your boss, who's dressed well, you're doing a great job. I I guess in some really like you'd have to have a very weird situation where your boss wears like really nice polos and then you wear a suit. Yeah, and he's like offended by it. And it's like a weird business where like it's not normal to wear. I don't know. It, it, it's it, fucked up. I don't even think this is. I think the small percent people who probably have this isn't a rule. It. There's it's no not, rule like yeah. this. The I, rule is dress for the job you want. And then this last one is no white between Labor Day and Memorial yeah, Day. Yeah, I've heard this a lot from fashion hard hard ons. Yeah, because I wear white shoes all the time. Because this rule, I don't give a fuck about. I'll tell you why this is a bad rule. Tell me. Because I always confuse the two, and I can't remember which is which. So I I never know sure. where, when I should wear white and when I shouldn't wear white. Mm-hmm. I know one is one is in the fall and one is in spring, but like we just had something. Wait, well, yeah. So so basically, it's in the summer. They say you can't wear white. At the end of summer, no. Or is it back? Is it you can't wear white until summer? You can't wait until summer. Yep. That's what it is. Yeah. Between and Labor Day. Labor Day is... Yeah, Memorial Day is like in May. Labor Day is in like September. Yes, September. You can't yeah, wear see, white shoes anymore. Yeah, well, you, well, white in the winter is awesome. Why wouldn't you wear white in the winter? You look dope. It's dumb. Yeah. And and I read several articles about this one actually where designers are like, white in the winter looks great. Yeah, it looks really... I mean, and then this rule is really busting their flavor. This rule is completely arbitrary. It's complete nonsense. Hey, you know what? Don't wear... Uh, don't wear black in, in October. Don't ever do it. Yeah. You can't do it. I say so. It's stupid. Yeah. So I would say wear white. Fuck. Anybody tells you that rule, you yeah. just go, you know what? You don't know shit about dick. Rage against the machine. So Where's that's fucking stupid. Way. So yeah, those are our thoughts. Those are some those. good. Those are some. That's, I'll, uh, I'll post that article. Read it. You know, yeah, it's kind write, of interesting. Write it on your thoughts. I know a lot of you guys have been really great about commenting. Hey, thanks and, for writing uh, in, yeah, guys. really appreciate that. We do read them. I tell you, I read. We love to uh, read them. Dan, you wrote some good responses. We thought your stuff about was really interesting about about animals and babies about babies yeah like just to, yeah. to talk about it Dan says that human babies are pathetic and horrible compared to animal babies because human babies come out a lot sooner in their development than like deer or dog babies vaginas are too small to, to because handle. yeah then if they got any bigger inside they wouldn't be able to come out the out the, the Virgil fun fact I heard recently that bulldogs are supposed to be extinct because their heads are too big oh, to be they, birthed. They have to be C-section. They have to be out. C-section. So they're the only reason they still exist is because we do C-section. Well, so. I mean, they never did exist. We made bulldogs. The fucking Englishmen they made bulldogs. Yeah, and then now that's what I didn't. Yeah, I didn't they would never. That. They were never natural. That's, that's so weird, isn't that? that's kind of crazy. It's yeah. almost like genetic 
Tanner. It's, yeah, it absolutely yeah. is. So yeah, Dan, thanks for running that, and thanks for correcting us on. Uh, I knew it wasn't cleavage, but Moe's hardness, I believe, is what he said. Is how you tell how hard something like a mineral is, or how hard something is. Is that not okay? Not, and it's, not cleavage. It's Dan Bogro. Yeah, we got to Hopefully, we got. Unless I said it wrong just now, these I'm gonna hear about it. For sure. Sorry, Dan. We deserve it though. People, whatever. Love you, buddy. So we got a little uh, surprise for all you who liked Bloodsport Live. Yeah. We're doing it again. I mean, not Bloodsport. Not Bloodsport. Although it'd be funny if we just did Bloodsport every time. Forever, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to be The Room uh, next Saturday at 11. Did we talk about this in the cast? I can't remember. We've never talked about this yet. The Room is an amazing movie. It was one of your picks. We did talk about it. Okay, good. So, yeah, because weird movies are, like, really goofy. Yep. So, The, the Room. We talked about it. I think that's what we're going to watch. Uh, Saturday at 11, same time as Bloodsport. I'll, I'll put it up. It's same thing. I'm going to stream it myself. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to bring anything. Just show up to this chat room and then hang out with us and talk about it. It's going to be f- hilarious. I know, it, hopefully Saturday 11 has been working good. I We got a little flexibility there. I, I, I want more people to come in. So like if people tell me or tell us that there's a better time or a better day, you know, we'll, we'll try to maybe work around it if it's reasonable. But let us know because we, we want more people to join in these things. Yeah, tell us about what time is best. If yeah. it's too late, let us know. I mean, we do a podcast around 9, so we need some, you know, we can yeah. do it earlier. Whatever. Yeah, maybe we can do it at 7 and then do the podcast. Talk about it with yeah. us. But yeah, so this time we'll set it up next yeah. Saturday, the room at 11. Yeah, Central. 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 Yeah. So join us for that. Uh, and real quick, a little preview for next week is, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but I saw I pre-ordered the, uh, the iPhone 6. So I should be getting it tomorrow in the mail, I think. So next week, I'm going to talk about my experience with it, if you guys are interested, and do a little review, a little hands-on, tell you how, tell you how I like it, if you care at all, and uh, let you know how to do it. And then I think, Alex, iOS 8. You're going to get iOS 8 I'm going to get iOS 8 installed. I haven't yet, yeah. but I will, and I'll review it. So we'll do a little, we'll do a little review segment at the, at the top of the show. That'll be real fun. Plus, do our picks. Let's do some picks. You ever, you ever listen to podcasts that have drops? Like a, like a musical drop, like they do this section and then there's like a like a beat interlude. No, you remember that? Never. I listen to some that drops, like it's a, like. Did this, you like it? I love it. I think we should get a drop for picks. A sure. Nice drop. Okay. Well, we'll do, if any of you out there are good at music, you know, like some sometimes they sample voices from the podcast of old other episodes, uh-huh. and they get like snippets over music and shit. If you can do that, if you want to get us a drop for a pick of the week, then hook us up. We might start we'll get playing. A drop. Okay. Yeah. What's your pick? Uh, well, I got the new, the new Naruto game, and I'm loving it. You and Jack for this. I got. I took two days off work just so I can beat it and get all the characters unlocked. One of the things about these fucking fighting games is that they have all the characters locked until you beat the stupid story mode and unlock them all, that's so you can so un- finally. That's so outdated. It's so dumb because all I want to do is play with my friends, and I want to play the fucking story mode. Like I play the story mode on my time, but I get the game. I want to play with my friends. I'm okay. You know what I like is. I want most of the characters unlocked. Maybe a few like secret characters. Yeah. Like I love the games where like you you gotta you know find like how to get uh, reptile in Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat, but it's yeah. got, it, can't, it can't be more than like five. Yeah, I mean a few, but like yeah. this game's got eighty characters and fucking you know twenty are unlocked until you beat the game. Yeah, that's obnoxious. Fuck that. So, but anyway, I, I unlocked them all. It took me like six hours, and now I have all of them, and the game is really fun. I like it. Check mm-hmm. it out on YouTube if you like fighting games. It, it looks amazing. It looks it looks amazing. As far as another my my pick of the week for a game, I uh, as you might know, I'm a big fan of deals. So I downloaded uh, on a deal for five bucks Fight Night Champion. It's a EA Sports. Oh, the boxing. Yeah, love those games. It's so fun. Holy shit, it's awesome. When you do like a not when you knock somebody out, it goes all slow mo and their face ripples with the impact of the punch. Yeah. And they've got like a whole. I I'm not big into boxing as far as like I don't watch it or like follow it really, but I know most of these names. Like, a, a Mike Tyson versus Muhammad Ali fight is great. The online's great. There's a really cool story mode where, like, you play through the life of this guy who, like, goes through his whole career path and he, there's like, all crazy twists and stuff, and it's really cool. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of fun. And then you can make your own boxer and, like, you know, build up your stats. It's almost like an RPG for boxing, which is really cool. And it, I bought it for 5 bucks. I'm sure you can get it for pretty cheap, too. And it's a lot of fun. I think, I think people, even who don't like sports games necessarily – would have a good time with this. The controls are really cool. It's got like the stick where you, um, you just you, you punch like through the stick. So if well, I each do... each stick is a hand. Well, no, no. The the left stick is you move around, but the right oh. stick is like if I go down and right with the right stick, okay. that's a right hook. If I go up with the the right stick, it's a jab. Like okay. up to the left is a jab. Up to the right okay. is a right jab. All right. You know, down hook. So yeah, so it's like this whole control. There's also the old school buttons if you want that, but it, it you feel like it's really cool. And you're bobbing, weaving. I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, those, I, I'm a big Fight Night fan. Yeah. I like those games. I used to have some. Uh, music. Uh, well, I went to see a tobacco show. Tobacco was a band. 
and uh, I want to just talk about concerts. They're awful. Concerts are the sh- are the worst. I always want to like them more, and I always feel like when I look back, they're a great experience. But whenever I'm at the concert, I I'm never having a good time. I mean, I went because I love the band, yeah. and I'm happy I went, and it was fun to see the person live. Uh, the the music was you know was too loud. You can't hear the one before my guy went on. There was some other guy, you know, some other band, and there was some drummer who was imagine like it before the show. Somebody said to this drummer, "If you don't play loud enough, I'm gonna murder your fucking family." And he did it. He did. So love, he, he was. Loved, he loves his family. He was drumming for his fucking life. Oh, drumming's a little hard. Out. He was bashing those fucking cymbals so loud. They were like, Pick and then the poor sticks. pathetic fucking singer. He was trying to sing, and I watched him screaming into the microphone. I couldn't hear a fucking thing. And at the door, they give you ear, 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 uh, muff, muff, wow, really? ear, ear, uh, ear plugs, plugs, ear yeah. plugs. They give you ear plugs at the door because it's so fucking awful. So, you know, we were outside mostly for the whole, f- not our, our band tobacco. And then finally tobacco came on and it was, you know, that was amazing. The whole concept of an opening act is so interesting because sometimes I get it. Like sometimes it's a cool, they're, they're cool thematically. It's like, uh, like similar bands or maybe a, a band that's like similar, but kind of up and coming. Yeah. Or for the more popular the artist is, I feel like the more interesting the opener usually is. It's usually somebody also probably sure. equally famous. Yep. But for bands like Tobacco, who are like, heard of. Yeah. who like you're going to see Tobacco, like you're you know they're they're specifically who you're going to see. Mm-hmm. You've never heard of the the we other opening band, mm-hmm. and you're taking a gamble. It's either hit or miss. I mean, it's... either they're awesome and they're really cool, and you learn a new band, or they're horrible. And most of the time, I feel like they're horrible. Well, even if they're good, you don't know because the music sounds like shit. Well, that's your... I mean, that was probably... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't go to concerts where, often. Where, where was the venue? I never knew. Triple, triple Rock. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I always get... I always trick myself into, co- like, going to a concert. I'm always like, oh, yeah, I'm going to see the artists. I really like them. Uh, it'll be fun. And then I'm there, and I'm like, everybody's touching me. Oh, God, I hate the people touching you. The sweaty, fat, sweaty, sweaty strangers are touching fat me. Fat fucks touching you all the time. It's disgusting in there. It's hot. I'm standing. My legs are getting tired. It sucks. I've been here two hours, and the, the band I want to see still hasn't gone up. I, I can't, not in a good way. I can't even hear them. They don't they don't do anything cool with their music. Like the cool ones at least are ones who do cool covers or like cool versions of their songs. Just something mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Like my one of my favorite bands to go see in live was the Decemberists. I saw them like three times. And they always do like fun audience interaction and cool shit. But if you're like like well, I went to see the Arctic Monkeys one time. <laughs> And they just fucking... I couldn't understand a word he was saying. Yeah. Well, I could hear him saying, but he was speaking and his accent was all impossible yeah, to tell. Yeah, fucked. And they didn't do anything. They just did like one album, straight through, and they left. So then uh, I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy a shirt for sure because I want, I want to have a That's souvenir. why I go to concerts. Yeah, that's the, the shirt. I want to buy a shirt. Yeah. So I'm in there. I'm like, I want to buy a shirt. So I go to the merch table, okay? And there's one shirt that is not that great and it's extra, extra large. Ugh. And I'm like, you have a shirt that's not extra, extra large? Like, no. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing then? Like, I get that you're... Okay, I get it. He's touring or whatever, and he's out of merchandise. Look, don't put yourself in a position where you're missing a sale. That's weird. It's yeah. not worth it. Was you it early I mean? on in the night? Um, well, I mean, he hasn't come on yet. I mean, Then, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I mean. That's really Yeah, nice. I mean, we, we came there to watch tobacco, and they came on, and they had the only extra, extra large shirts. Do you remember in high school, or like, where, you know, any middle school, high school, when there was like a big concert, and the next day everybody came to school wearing that fucking concert shirt? No. You didn't have that? Oh fuck! I remember like there was like a Backstreet Boys concert, well, well, Backstreet and the Boys. next day, like shit like that. Like the next day, everybody came to school wearing a Backstreet that's, Boys that's awesome. concert shirt. That's awesome. You know? It's always funny like to, to see all the people. I'm gonna put so up that some. Sucks. I recorded some videos uh, on my phone. I'm gonna hopefully put. Well, you know what? Fuck my videos are stupid. I'll put up the videos on YouTube yeah, of what is going on. This guy's whole thing, like here's what he performs as. He's just a dude on a mixer. You know, he's a techno. It's techno, weird fucking techno shit. And his videos are all old '80s footage. Of 80s infomercials, aerobics films, wrestling movies, and pornography. Yeah, it's weird. All mixed together with like all this static and weirdness. It's fucking creepy. Just if you don't want to click on the link or if you're listening on at home, just YouTube tobacco like band. You, yeah. Tobacco. You'll tobacco. Look up. You look up tobacco music videos. I'll put some up in the links. And my last pick of the week, unless you got anything else. No. Nope. My last pick of the week is Edge of Tomorrow. That's the Tom Cruise. Yeah. Holy shit, that movie's amazing. People love that movie. It, it snuck up on everybody, I feel like. Because it was like, oh, cool, here's some shitty... Because the last sci-fi movie Tom Cruise made was Oblivion, which was fine, I heard. I didn't hear anything great. Mm-hmm. But then I looked at, like, Rotten Tomatoes. This movie is like, a 91%, you know, fresh wow. score. And it deserved it. It's so cool. And if you don't know the premise... Groundhog Day meets sci-fi war. Yeah. But, like, done very well. Yeah. First of all... Uh, if you don't okay if you don't know what Groundhog Day is it's just somebody who has to repeat the same day over and over and they're kind of stuck in this endless loop and Tom Cruise is doing this but it's not just some like in Groundhog Day it doesn't it's kind of a weird it just happens in this movie there's like a sci-fi explanation 
Uh, Tom Cruise is dope. I think he's an incredibly underrated actor, by the way. Yeah, he's a weirdo, and he probably that turned a lot of people off. But if you look at his movie catalog, he kills it. He's a, he acts very hard. He's always like putting his pull, pull, pull hard in the role, and he's good. And Emily Blunt is a babe in this movie. She's a babe. Yeah. But the alien design looks awesome. I gotta show you some of these aliens on like a YouTube clip or something. They look so fucking cool. The plot is great. The movie's great. It's a lot of fun. I love the whole idea. It, it, I enjoyed this movie more than I've enjoyed a lot of movies this year. It, it's coming out, I think, on like DVD and Blu-ray soon. Uh, video on demand, all that shit. Get it. Watch it. it. It went underrated in theaters. Most people didn't go see it. And get that movie the, the attention it deserves. Because I want Hollywood to make more movies like this. Because it's fucking great. Good movie. Loved it. So you're saying watch it. Watch it. Pick of the week. All right, man. So, uh, hey. That's it, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Uh, Don't forget to uh, subscribe to us on iTunes. Hopefully, you know, if you listen to the podcast, use your app. Hey, get us on iTunes. Yeah, hit us up Follow on... Follow us on the tweets. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, I don't even want to tell them what it is. I am at Trial by Yuri. Yuri with a Y. And rate us on iTunes. We need the ratings. It helps us out. Give us a five-star rating. Hopefully. Hey, we want to be top ten, don't we? Someday. <laughs>